Challenger. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, seven points, eight points, nine points from the panel. More like the lottery numbers. Anyway, it's Cork who've won the toss and they're ready to play from right to left. And very, very light breeze behind them. Sweltering conditions. Referee is Barry Cassidy from Derry. Crowd of two and a half thousand people here. It's uh, Munster final weather usually, but without the big, huge crowds, without the minor match, without all the other things, the parade and so on. But they were selling tubs of ice creams here, like old times, the last of the ices and the start of the match. And it's Kerry who get the first possession here. And there's a big, huge cheer as Dermot O'Connor is told to come back. It's the 120th match ever in the wonderful history of Cork and Kerry football games. That Shawnee O'Shea sets off immediately to his right-hand side. He's got Jack Barry called in late in case you joined us. Too, too late changes made by Kerry. And Jack uh, Barry is one of those changes. The other Paul Murphy coming into the half-back line. Sean Powder. This is Kevin O'Donovan from Nemo Rangers taking it up. No pressure on him yet. Nearest player is Paul Ganey. First touch for goalkeeper Michal Martin, another Nemo man. Able to take it down here is Sean Meehan. Would have been expecting to play at number six. Here's Kevin Flahiv, missed last year's monster final. Ian McGuire looking for a bright start for the Rebels. Out comes Hurley, that's Brian Hurley. Taking it back here, his younger brother, Michael, has a goal. And he puts Cork in front. And that has taken just over a minute. Exactly what Cork wanted coming into this game, a bright start. Kevin Fla have set up that play and a great score from distance. And it hopefully will settle Cork down into this game. Shane Ryan lobbing it out here in the direction of Stephen O'Brien. Now, Brian O'Biagli, you may remember last year in November when they played in the Munster semi-final, he was up on the half-forward line. Then he was uh, taken off and then brought back on for extra time. Stephen O'Brien didn't miss the start of that. Carried in well here. You'll have noticed uh, Paul Murphy wearing number 19. The other centre-half back for today, Sean Powder. Real tear away. After him goes Dermot O'Connor and two others. Luke Connolly now. What kind of match will he have? Needs to be influential if Cork are to do well. Dan Deneen. Coming in here, no whistle from the referee. Perfectly fair challenge. Barry Cassidy has decided. Shane Ryan. Came back in, of course, for the uh, Tipperary match. This is uh, Kerry's third Monster Championship match of the season and Jack Barry stretching his legs now Brian Hurley in pursuit Ian Maguire as well he's made about 50 metres and maybe more Sean O'Shea chance of getting Kerry's opening score here what will it be it falls to Clifford under hit and that's going to go still in play Ian Maguire did well to prevent a 45 but it might have been a 45 rather than a goal chance for Kerry Sean O'Shea was busy again back there but nothing came of it Meehan out as far as Brian Hurley Cork living a bit dangerously yeah a couple of great opportunities there for the Kerry team initially if Sean O'Shea was a bit quicker with the hand pass across to David Clifford could have created that goal opportunity that they needed Rory Dean now Hep moved on quickly by Brian Hartnett Luke Connolly kicking it with the right now what kind of control has he got on it not an awful lot it would appear as that's gone the wrong side of the upright yeah you can see it here the goal chance you can see Jack Barry made a great run Sean O'Shea if he flicked it across decided to shoot left foot great save by Michal Martin and David Clifford who's dropped the ball already hit that pass or hand pass into the goalies and away come this Cork team getting away with it Potty Clifford now has had a wonderful year so far. Mike Breen looking for maybe a first championship score here in the Munster final. That one has gone left and it has gone wide as well. So a wider piece. Carry a little bit relaxed and casual in their approach in the early minutes of this game. Yeah, and when you look down at the pitch with the ball is thrown up, every Cork player was touched tight to their player. There was a bit of argy bargy in midfield between David Moore and you see a Cork jersey being swapped there. It's Cork are up for this game. They were bullish beforehand. Ron McCarthy was talking about the, their good record of 14 out of six, 14 wins out of 16 matches. John O'Rourke still holding on to the number 10. 
And that went off the uh, carry player there, Mike Green. I thought. It's a car foil, yeah. Langeland down there is Derek O'Mahony, who was the referee for the Cork Kelly match last year. Brian Hurley. Bounces another one. Has he got it? He has. Second point for Michael Hurley. His best championship day was on the Super 8s a couple of years ago against Tyrone when he got four points in Croke Park. You can see it here. He found himself in time and space. Nobody marking and the Kerry defences are six and sevens. Initially, the linesman had given the ball to Kerry, so maybe the defence relaxed, but that was a great score by Michael Hurley. Stephen O'Brien back very, very deep. Kerry starting from well within their own 45-metre line. Bit of pressure applied now on Gavin White as he was trying to come out there. Fouled by Brian Hurley. Gavin White who got that amazing goal in the league here against Tyrone. Love the Tyrone goalkeeper, Niall Morgan, from about 45 metres. And that saw two court players go for the one ball, and Toddy Clifford is into benefit and sends it forward, and there's a real chance now. Well saved. David Clifford should have buried it. Michal Martin comes to Cork's rescue. Great play by Paddy Clifford, was waiting for the run from David Clifford, chopped it over the bar, but what a save by Michal Martin. Kerry should have two goals by now. Matty Taylor into space, two Cork players there waiting for it. Luke Connolly, well, operating well away from the number 13 position, that's for sure anyway. And that pass cut out, but they had a chance to get it forward again through Kean Kiley. Did very well when he came on against Limerick. Brian Hartnett played well in that match in the second half. Only his second ever championship game. Back once again towards Kylie, the Balancholic player. Michael Hurley, Cork scorer so far. Luke Connolly, better looking pass this time. And it's uh, Dan Deneen who takes the offensive mark. It's going to be a very awkward angle for him. You can see two Cork players going for the ball. It breaks to Toddy Clifford. He's waiting for T. David to make the run. He makes the run on his favourite left foot, drives it straight at the goalkeeper, and what a missed opportunity. Two goal chances and great save by Michal Martin. But you would have to say that David Clifford would be disappointed he didn't place it to one side. Dan Deneen has scored his first ever championship point at senior from that mark. And now Ronan McCarthy's team lead here by three points to nil. Just strikes me, Desi, that Michal Martin made a similar kind of save in last year's match against Kerry. Then it was against Brian Biagli, you might remember. Yeah, and it's been a sluggish start, you'd have to say, by this Kerry team. They've, uh, they've been slow to get going, slow, obviously, to get on the scoreboard. So they need to settle into it and take a score. Plenty of time for them. Gavin White now sending it forward towards Paddy Clifford, the instigator of so many of Kerry's attacks this year league and championship but he was tracked the whole time this time it is Paul Ganey and the referee's got to bring the play back bring it to Kerry that man again Tony Clifford does so much good work and for me he's he's been a, the major reason you can see great tackling there but just a little bit of a push in the back there and the referee gave the free for that Kevin O'Donovan doing his bit to shadow Tony Clifford an onerous task in very very warm conditions got down but there was a little push the referee spotted, and now Kerry have this chance with Shawty O'Shea of Ken Mayer ready to try and get Kerry on the board with eight minutes gone. And he's done the needful. So Kerry off and running. Fans a little happier. And as expected, Sean Meehan has taken the role of marking that David Clifford, an onerous task. Ian Maguire has been picked up by David Moran, so some key battles out there. Always a great atmosphere in Killarney. It's a wonderful venue for a match at any time. Long kick out towards Ian Maguire. Couldn't contain it. Instead, it's Gavin White knocking it forward to Shawnee O'Shea. O'Shea has support here. It's Paul Ganey. Ganey taking on Meehan. Going a second time. Ganey. And that one is fisted over the crossbar. A second point in a row then for Kerry. And now it's 3-2 and looking a lot brighter for the kingdom. And so quickly can do this, but there's so many aces, this Kerry team, and Paul Ganey, he kicked left foot, he kicked right foot, and he decided that time to fist it over the bar. Brilliant score. Well, the question of how would they deal with the kickouts, Cork? Michal Martin again going long because there was a high press employed by Kerry, and it's straight into the hands of David Moran. And it gives great leadership and experience to Kerry's midfield, but the referee has given the free kick to Cork. And it's Michael Hurley now able to knock it forward here, taking it back.
Comers to the uh, Cork attack, getting the scores so far. Michael Hurley and Dan Deneen. And that final ball there is Cork's second wide. Loose pass there by Luke Connolly. It worked earlier on. He created a mark for Dan Deneen, but in that instance, he drove the ball too long. He was looking for Brian Hurley, the long ball, the long diagonal ball inside, but didn't work out. Very tall Kerry goalkeeper, six foot four inches tall. Another tall man here is Jack Barry. Mike Breen. David Moran now firing it forward. It's going to be cut out here by Matty Taylor. Given off as far as Sean Meehan. He may have number three on his back, but he's one, he wants to go forward. Meehan goes down. Jack Barry was the one who made contact with him. Play continues. It's Brian Hurley taking on Jason Foley. Hurley trying to make an angle for himself and a squeeze it between the uprights, and he's managed it. It's a remarkable point by Brian Hurley, complimenting the two that his younger brother, Michael, has scored already. And Cork lead here by four points to two. Great score again by Brian Hurley. He came along the sideline, turned back onto his favourite right foot. But you see Sean Meehan is down. Barry Cassidy is going to investigate this. And Jack Barry did body check Sean Meehan, so it'll be interesting to see what this happens. It could be a black card because uh, Brendan Cawley, the Kildare official yeah. on this near side, certainly would have seen it. Yeah, it, it does look as if he body checked him, Jack Barry, and it's pretty clear cut in that picture. So it's interesting to see does Barry Cassidy take the action. Sean Meehan here from Kish Kame. He's been saying in interviews during the week that uh, the journey from Kish Kame to here in Killarney, only about 25 minutes. Yeah, and it looks like no action is going to be taken here by Barry Cassidy. It's an interesting decision. Jack Barry had started well, won a couple of kickouts. And uh, Meehan is following Stephen O'Brien, so they're leaving just two defenders. Matty Taylor is one of those, and also Kevin Flahev in the court full back line. Two full back line players, as it were, with Sean Potter there, not too far away as well, a sweeping in front. Now they've switched around, and Meehan has gone back. Rory Dean. Missed there by Dan Deneen. Two Kerry players there. One of them is Stephen O'Brien. Giving it off here. O'Biagli. Referee in the way. Brian Hartnett. Back to Michael Hurley again. Setting off once more, this time it's John O'Rourke. Score against Limerick, Luke Connolly back in here as far as Hartnett. Big Brian Hartnett, fancying this, why not? Another one for Cork in his second championship match. A first championship point for the 21-year-old from Douglas. Yeah, Shane Ryan had a poor kick out, went over the sideline. All of a sudden the ball is over the bar. And Cork have settled in this game very well. I watched him against Limerick. This is a different team playing today in the Munster final. They like playing against Kerry, you know. Gavin White. Gavin White making an awful lot of ground. Passes a little wayward, however. Stephen O'Brien unable to reach it initially. Then going in there is Sean Powder to try and hold on to it for Cork. Bit of a scramble. Referee allows it continue to develop. And in the end, bending his back and taking it is Kevin Flahev. Quickly out to the totally unmarked Luke Connolly. He can carry this about 50 metres if he wants to. Paul Murphy trying to go across to him. Trying to angle the pass. It's just ahead of Brian Hurley. Not the best from Luke Connolly. A couple of his passes now going astray. Yeah, all coming from the quick turnover. He was in acres of space. He had time to make the correct decision. He decided to look for it. Brian Hurley inside. Diagonal pass. Very risky pass. Wasn't on. Poor decision. And when there was so much good work done by the Cork defence, it was a cheap pass. Ogagli contains that. Paul Murphy just saying to him, come on, get it forward. Pressure there now put on Tom O'Sullivan. Testing opening for the full back line, Brian Ogagli, Jason Foley and Tom O'Sullivan. That time out over the sideline went Dermot O'Connor. Feeling his leg as well. Yeah, Ian McGuire. And this is what Cork are bringing to the match. They're bringing an intensity that the Kerry boys, they haven't settled into this game right now. And they're asking the question, are they up for it? What about the pitch, Desi? You were down there. It's grassy, but it really. <laughs> it's the Sean O'Shea cut. Perfect for kicking frees off the ground. But Ian McGuire, disappointed the free was given away there. Barry Cassidy was quick on it, but he seems to have hurt himself in that challenge. Derek O'Mahony, the linesman down there from Tipperary. Well, now, couldn't afford to lose Jeremy O'Connor. He's become very much a kind of senior midfield player. 
alongside David Mora in the League and Championship. So they're down to 14 at the moment, into the attack. Going across here and collecting this one. Gainey back as far as Clifford. Coming forward now is Tom O'Sullivan, got a couple of tasty points against Tipperary, and he's got one here. And when you have a cornerback who can attack like that, following his man up the field, of course, and able to score, it's quite a plus. 5 3. Yeah, all the, curry, or the Cork defenders were following their own men, minding the Sean O'Shea's, David Clifford, Paul Gainey's of this world, and then they let Thomas Sullivan just drift in very easily for a cheap score. Good score. Brian Hartnett. Man of the match against Dublin in the 2019 under 21 final. This talent coming through. John O'Rourke. Now Kean Kiley. Down to a two man inside forward line. Brian Hurley going for it, winning it. Looking to turn, get it on his right. Sums up the angle of difficulty, but misses. And it's Cork's fourth wide. Yeah, a couple of good opportunities with Cork have gone a begging there. Brian Hurley had done everything right, turned back on his favourite right foot. You would imagine he could have stroked it over the bar. Poor miss. So two between them still in this opening quarter. Sean O'Shea calling for it, saying, give it to me from the kick out. Nobody tracked him. Stephen O'Brien. The additions today, as we've had for the last 10 days, are so very demanding on all athletes. And everyone. O'Sullivan again, Sean O'Shea, Gainey coming, throw of the shoulders, not going to deceive Kevin Flahev that easily. Coming into it now, Paul Murphy, and the team captain, Paul Murphy, still wriggling, wriggling his way forward, he's left the football behind him, and eventually knocked down towards Rory Dean. Great turnover again for this Cork team, and that's going to fuel to the fire. They've done extremely well to settle into this game. Ian Maguire down as far as Hurley again. Brian Hurley cutting inside. It's a chance of a goal, maybe. He's got it. His eighth ever championship goal. 17 minutes in. Quite a turn up. All while Jeremy O'Connor is still on the sideline, a substitution was not made by Peter Keane. The turnover there from the Cork defender ended up the pitch, and you can see the intent from Brian Hurley taking on Jason Foley down the line, drove by him, and finished neatly to the nest, low and hard. Great finish. And the defender you were talking about was a forward, John O'Rourke back helping. That's a splendid finish by Brian Hurley. His last goal was against Kerry in 2019 in the Monster Championship. Changes coming up, Paddy O'Shea, or Paddy Clifford, I should say. And Paddy Clifford gets it on his left, drives it over. Great, great score by Paddy Clifford. And that was a long, that was a long passage of play that Jeremy O'Connor was on the sideline. And that will be the concern. Peter Keane should have made that change an awful lot quicker. And as a result, Cork went up the pitch and got a fantastic score. Killian Spillane ready to come on. He did really well when he came on last year. So, Damien, let's uh, hear from you at halftime. Damien Lawler down on the sideline. Yeah, Ger, a huge, huge Cork vocal presence here in the stand. The Cork bench absolutely erupting every time their teammates score a goal. Keen O'Neill is shouting all the instructions from the sideline, and Ronan McCarthy warned us before the game that there was a, a whirlwind coming from his players. Certainly, Kerry looked to be absolutely rattled, Ger, but uh, with a team of their quality, you imagine they'll find their way into the game. Peter Keane, the manager, was up with his management team of Tommy Griffin and Morris Fisherl, James Ford just checking on the matchups, but clearly, Jared, they've got lots of work to do. Cork in a driving seat at the moment. Thank you, Damien. Desi, we've already seen one match today where one team dominated the first half and were eclipsed in the second. Yeah, but I have to say, right now, this Kerry team haven't settled into this game. I'm looking at matchups where Jason Foley's been isolated on Brian Hurley time and time again. Uh, the decisions around the midfield, they're running up the pitch, they're going into blind alleys, there's a lot of cork turnovers. As a result of that, they're driving up the pitch and creating good opportunities at the other end. But Kerry, right now, like we think of David Clifford, Sean O'Shea, Paul Ganey, Stephen O'Brien, we haven't seen much from these players so far. Cork with their 1-5, 1-4 of uh, those scores coming from play. The only point to come from uh, place ball, as it were, was uh, a mark by Dan Deneen. That's a good spot to see the game, isn't it? <laughs> they have a lovely garden behind as well. We saw uh, people out there earlier in the day enjoying themselves. 
Yeah, Ron, Ron O'Carty there, we've seen him in picture. He was very bullish before this game in the interview. I've seen the team, he walked through the tunnel beside us and you can see the intensity in the Cork players. Before the ball was thrown up, there was jerseys ripped, they were touch tight. They're not backing off on the challenge today. So the restart will be with a kick out by Michal Martin playing in his fifth championship match. He's kept his goal intact for the last three of those championship games. So Killian Spillan is out there now, I believe, part of the Kerry team, substituting for Dermot O'Connor, who was forced off injured. If there is a concern for me, it's Michal Martin's kickouts. They're just going long time and time again, and Kerry Cur Cur defender or Kerry midfielder doing particularly well on it, particularly David Moore. And here comes the new man in, Killian Spillan. Looking for his first scoring opportunity, taking on Kevin O'Donovan. And eventually out over the end line, and it gets a big court cheer, as you would expect. Again, you would say class has another turnover there. The intensity that the Cork defenders are bringing to this. You see Sean Powler coming across. Brilliant bit of play for him, driving him out over the sideline. So let's see how this kick-out goes. It's won by Cork, and it's John O'Rourke who takes it down. Now, Luke Connolly. Rory Dean. Two against him, steps away from the first challenge. In as far as Brian Hurley. On his left this time, he can use right or left. Goal on the point now for Brian Hurley. Very satisfactory start to the match. And good to see Rory Dean get involved with the play. He's been quiet so far, but you can see the awareness to give it to Brian Hurley. It's a one-on-one -on -one match. Why would you not give it to him? Jason Foley is at sixes and sevens back there. He has been very good for Kerry up to this point, but he's struggling right now. He's new to the full backs, Bob, remember. But he's been left isolated time and time again with no help or no one getting around uh, Brian Hurley. Tag Morley, one of the subs. Johnny O'Shea in as far as David Moran. Can he change matters for Kerry? He can with this kick anyway. In his 47th ever championship game, his 14th time playing against Cork, and he gets a first point here. It makes it 1-6 to 5 points. He really is a classy player. He can do everything there, but a badly needed score for this Kerry team. It's the second year in a row that the Munster finalists do not include the current provincial champions. O'Shea, Ganey. On his shoulder there, he's got Breen. Shows a little bit too much of that, but then manages to get it out as far as Tom O'Sullivan. I thought the back had a chance of intervening there, Kevin Flahev. Cross comes Killian Spillan. Now Body Clifford. Nothing from his brother so far. And that is uh, a wayward kick there by Stephen O'Brien, and it is... Uh, a third wide by Kerry. Yeah, Ronan McCarthy again will be delighted. He set up his defence very well. Lots of numbers back there. And all of them working extremely hard. And then when they get into possession, quick counter-attack play. Long ball into the full forward line. So in terms of a system, it's working very well. That lands perfectly into the hands here of Mike Breen. Well, he's one of those players who's come off the conveyor belt of an underage level. Was the minor midfielder in 20 or 16. Here's Clifford. That's Paddy Clifford. Another strike and another point. Clifford gets a second. Yeah, if you ask me, one of the main differences this year is this man, uh, in terms of his work rate, his energy, his ability to run directly at opposition teams, his scoring ability, and he's 26 assists, assists in, in six games. So an incredible footballer. We saw him, of course, here playing in the club championship for East Kerry. And even at that stage, a couple of years ago, you were saying, well, why isn't he part of the kingdom setup? But uh, Peter Keane very wisely drafted him in, and he has so much to offer, as you say, Desi. Michal Martin, hoping this one will land in cork hands, fumbled, thought Moran had it, and now it's an opportunity for Michael Hurley. Two points already, this time going back, taking it from him, brilliantly so, by Brian Biagli. Fisted out as far as David Moran. Kicking it, and there are two men completely on their own, nobody near them, and one of them is Tom O'Sullivan. He's got Paul Ganey to his right. Switching inside. Fancying another one. They all count. Two for the day for the left quarterback. Brilliant dispossession by the Kerry defence. All of a sudden, you can see it here. 
Brian O'Vegley getting the hand in there and all of a sudden got to David Moore and he's long kick pass, 60, 70 yards of kick pass was what created that score and great play, second point for Thomas Sullivan. Once you make a lapse of any kind in this match, it will be seized on almost immediately. Since the water break, Kerry with three points, Cork with one. And that will be a, a line ball for Cork. And it's just interesting on Michal Martin, his kickouts are going long time and time again, so that, that's a key battleground in this match. Ronan McCarthy played in several Cork Kerry matches, uh, winning a couple of monster medals, of course, and of course he played in the 1999 All Ireland final. Peter Keane, another highly pressurised afternoon for him. Doesn't come easy if you're the Kerry Matt Bonish door, you're expected to win. Ian Maguire up into the air two against one broken down and collected very neatly indeed by Paul Murphy Gavin White here's Jack Barry about to be challenged by Brian Hartnett a learning experience for the like of Brian Hartnett and Dan Deneen playing at this level for the first time a poor pass there Kerry team and it's just a critical juncture here now for the Cork team in terms of creating opportunities. It's kind of slowed down their creative options up front, so to concentrate on that next couple of minutes. Two between them, Sean Meehan. He's been opening quite a few eyes with the quality of his football. Matty Taylor taking it away easily there from David Clifford. Clifford's been largely anonymous. One goal chance earlier on. Putting in a challenge now. Never scored against, never scored a goal against Cork. David Clifford in three previous championship matches. That results in a free kick. Sean Powder's hand has been held by the Kerry player. And an easy decision for Barry Cassidy. Powder. And back then came Paul Murphy to try and steer it away from the Cork man nearest to him. But then it gives Brian Hurley a chance, or maybe the support player coming in. Referee saw the challenge and decided it was a fair one. Cork player still down injured. Mike Green. Be interesting to see that one again. It looked like there was heavy contact there. So Barry Cassidy, wave play on, said the ball was hit. So as the player receives attention, Kerry move forward. Jack Barry, supported by Shawnee O'Shea. Hartner trying to put in a challenge. Body Clifford taking it forward now it's David Clifford out there marked by Meehan Shawnee O'Shea again giving it back Jack Barry trying to go past and Jack Barry kicking it nicely over in spite of the close attentions of Sean Powder first for the day for Barry and the gap closes it's 1-6 to 8 points great interchange play there Sean O'Shea David Clifford and got to Jack Barry possibly a goal opportunity there decided to take the point but just right now the intensity that we talked about from the Cork team has dropped a little bit under struggling to adapt to the Kerry attacking play ball's going astray passes going astray suddenly Kerry just lifting the tempo of the game and this man controlling it Paddy Clifford as far as Mike Breen O'Shea Breen goes ahead of him it's uh, Tom O'Sullivan playing more like a right half forward Breen David Clifford Bounces off Kevin Flahev, giving him nothing lightly. Killian Spillan. Only kicked four points against Cork last year. For Brian, feeding it through. David Moran scored already, giving it outside here. And saved by the goalkeeper. Another goal opportunity presented for Kerry. They've had a baby four so far. Possibly a bit of a half chance there for Paul Ganey. Probably better knock it over the bar, keep the scoreboard ticking over. A great play by David Moore to take, receive the pass under pressure and lay it out to Paul Ganey. And Janine seemed to take a fair few steps there, but uh, gets away with it. Brian Hartnett. Slowing it down a little. Rory Dean is free. Nobody marking him. That's happened quite a few t times on both sides. There's a change in that full back line. There is, because Brian Obiagli has now gone in on Brian Hurley. Yeah, that's the change we've been talking about. And uh, they've got cover back into the full back line as well. I think Jason Foley's in front of Brian Obiagli, and he's just a bit overzealous with the tackling there. 
it'll result in a, a free in anyway. Here's David Moore taking pressure from Rory Dean, laid it across the fall gainey. Easy save in the end for Mihol Martin. Yeah, you can see a little drop kick. He was trying to place into the corner, went straight to Mihol Martin. Cork haven't scored now for some eight, nine minutes. Brian Hurley. Goal and a point so far against his name, and that one is up into the air, but heading nearer to the corner flag, kept in play over there. Good work by Luke Connolly, all the way back to John O'Rourke. And O'Rourke might get something out of this. It hits off the post, it comes back down to Jason Foley. Two attempts, nothing accruing, however. Yeah, and a spectacular piece of play by Luke Connolly to keep the ball in play and to pass it back out there, and a missed opportunity again for his Cork team. Paul Gady, Kerry now coming, looking for the equaliser with uh, 28 minutes gone. Paulie Clifford, pursued by Kean Kiley. Got the forward with that ball to Sean O'Shea. Powters on him. O'Shea turning inside and out. Hitting it with that left, confidently so, nicely over. And it's nine points to 1-6. Sean O'Shea's second, and the teams are level. And you can see the ability to kick with both feet, the advantage it gives you as a forward. He turned back on the right, Powder committed himself back onto the left, kicked over from 30 yards, fantastic score from Sean O'Shea. Level for the first time in this match. Mihol Martin directing his kick out towards the wings this time. It's one against three. Hartnett touched it down. Luke Connolly was watching, unable to get it. Ian McGuire was the nearest player. Gavin White feeding it forward and trying to do so. Hartnett comes back again. Gets the chance to pick it up. In to Rory Dean. Day for strong hearts and strong wills. Meeting of the old rivals in Munster. Luke Connolly. Out to Brian Hartnett again. And the early long ball that we've seen in the particularly the first 20 minutes of the match. We're not seeing it as much now, which are with the, with Brian O'Begley going back in. It's kind of locked up Brian Hurley in terms of his running ability inside. So be interesting how that develops. Flahiv trying to provide a little bit of variation, maybe, in the way in which Cork approach their attacks. Ooh, Matty Taylor wasn't expecting that one. I mean, to keep try and keep it in play, and then it's kicked away. And the chance has got a begging because back there to help out was David Clifford, becoming the provider this time for Mike Breen, taking it back in in his stride. And the Fossa man, 22 years of age now, bringing it inside the cork half. Good kick, very good kick. Sean O'Shea, inevitably, that's his third. And now Cork Kerry lead here by 10 points to one. It's taken them a while to turn it around. Brilliant score by Sean O'Shea. He found himself in time and space. David Clifford laid it off. He kicked one with his right, left foot a couple of moments ago, and that was a spectacular score from his right foot. That uh, last water break has certainly uh, had an impact in the way in which the game's been played because Kerry have just upped the tempo quite considerably. Scored six points. Cork replied with just one. Inside the last five minutes, then, of the opening half. Stay moving, boys. Stay moving. I like the hurley. Do feel though, Ger, Ronan McCarthy will be happy with the performance he's put in so far. Coming into this game, people were talking about you know, possibly a Kerry annihilation, a lot of big result. Um, but they've done very well so far. They're right in this game. So I think maybe a half time will come, an opportunity to talk to his players. Dean, as far as Batty Taylor. Matty Taylor, the angle getting more acute for him and unable to manage anything there. And that's a fifth wide by Cork. But as you say, Ronan McCarthy will be relatively happy with the way things have developed. They came here as virtual no-hopers in the minds of so many people. And Peter Keane's team was expected to, I think uh, we heard Kieran Whelan mentioning, holding down. Or was it uh, Tomas O'Shea holding down? <laughs> Cork. We'll hear from them at halftime very shortly, along with Cora Staunton, of course. I'd be surprised if Tomas gave that much away. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Hartnett. Luke Connolly. Kicking it with the right, classical style, classical point as well. And that's what he offers, very talented player, drifting out and for much of this first half, found himself in space, outside of the right boot from 40 yards, brilliant score and a badly needed score for this Cork team. Team's level for the second time, Connolly who's got uh, two goals in the last Monster Final uh, in uh, Porky Cueve in 2019 against Kerry. Last monster final that is between these two. David Moran. Mike Green from Beaufort. 
Carried on here smartly now by Brian Obiagli. Looking to put Kerry in front again. Good running ahead of him, Jack Barry. Something there for the taking. It's a goal. It's a brilliant goal. Nobody came to Brian Obiagli, who's just kicked in his second ever championship goal, and he's done so in the 33rd minute. Yeah, we talked about Brian Obiagli going back to the full back line, taking up Brian Hare. He drifts down the pitch. He goes 50 yards into 30 yards. Drives the ball to the back of the net. Everyone backed off him. Brilliant finish. Low and hard to the net. Brilliant score from the corner back. It really was very, very good finishing. He's such ambition. I mean, most people would come forward like that with a number two in your back and put it over the bar. But he had greater ambition than that and saw a glaring gap. Big move for Kerry there to take a three-point lead, approaching half-time. What will the Cork response be? Brian Hartnett, Luke Connolly got their last score. He's going for another very, very big, ambitious one. That time, far too ambitious because it's a, a sixth wide by Cork. Yeah, and just a, there's a massive score there now for this Kerry team coming in. You've seen him, everybody backed off. He was waiting for someone to come to him. He's seen the time, seen the space, seen the gap in the corner. Brilliant finish. But Cork are just struggling in this game right now. And Desi, it's not as if we haven't noticed the fact that Peter Keane's corner backs come up and score. Tom O'Sullivan's been practically yeah. living in the Cork half of the field and he's got two points and obviously has got a goal. Yeah, it seems as if the Cork defenders are very much sticking to the jobs that they have, marking the likes of Sean O'Shea, Paul Ganey. John O'Rourke has hit a post, second time a post has been hit there and that's got to be a 45. Well, hitting the post is all very well, but the only reward they get is a 45 out of it. Yeah, you can see the shot coming in here, and all these opportunities missed for Cork. They're having an effect on the team's confidence. They go short of the 45, as far as Hartnett. He's having a go. Didn't look terribly confident in his approach there. Yeah, no, outside of the boot there is ambitious effort. Another poor effort for Cork, and it's just an opportunity now for Ron McCarthy. He needs to get his team into that dressing room. They've done well throughout the half. That goal just before half time was obviously a big blow, but he just needs to refocus his team for the second half. There's just going to be uh, two minutes of additional time played. Time for another few scores. Stephen O'Brien, Jack Barry. One of Kerry's scorers so far. They've had seven scorers. David Moran, one of them. And this is David Clifford. An audacious effort from well out the field. And he's got it wrong this time. And he hasn't scored so far. But his team is ahead by three. And an incredible do job done by Sean Meehan, you would have to say. He's been extremely tight on him. He picked him up as soon as the match started. And while he had some opportunities for a goal previously, he didn't take any scores in this match so far, which is very unusual. Can't say for certain, but Daniel O'Mahony, who can't play today because of injury, he might well have been the man to pick him up. That's intercepted here by Gavin White, the attempted pass there by Luke Connolly. Carrier moving again here. Stephen O'Brien fed inside as far as Mike Breen, one of the newcomers. And then there's a, a scoring opportunity with no challenge whatsoever on Killian Spillane. In the match about 15 minutes. Now he's got a point and Kerry are ahead by four. You mentioned Thomas Sullivan, two points, Brian O'Begley, the goal. Mike Green coming up there, laying the pass off. Great score then by Killian Spillane. But all this play coming from the defensive side, the attacking defender, defenders coming up the pitch. They're playing a bit more like the Kerry team we now have come to have such a high regard for. First 15 minutes certainly belong to Cork, 15 to 20. That's Brian Hurley back there kicking that one forward. It's uh, Luke Connolly who's picked it up. Connolly still going. The challenge, the referee says, with a fair shoulder. And out it comes as far as Mike Breen. And quickly the Kerry team are on the counter-attack and all of a sudden they're out of position, the Cork team. Corner back, come corner forward. It's Tom O'Sullivan. Transferred to Spillan. Dummy. Clifford in to O'Shea. Nice way to round off this first half. Had a few problems to iron out. They've ironed out those problems. And it's now 112 to 17. They certainly have settled into this game, but if we can remember 
couple of moments ago that ball was in Luke Connolly's hands up the pitch driving towards the goal it was intercepted and very quickly a couple of kick passes down the pitch Sean O'Shea knocks it over the bar well it's been a very very interesting and uh, enjoyable opening half of football early on dominated by Cork a goal by Brian Hurley after 17 minutes and then we saw Bruno Biagli after 33 come all the way up the field and get a goal for Kerry there are five between the teams at half time it is Kerry 112 Cork 17 we've analysis coming up in just a moment for our studio in Croke Park that's right after this Supervalue believe in community, and community includes everyone. We have a scourge upon our land. There's worse than pestilence and famine. There's a woman with a crown. Mary is our first and a Catholic. She is formidable. I am a Stuart, which gives me greater claim to England than you possess. No doubt blood will spill again. Our swords are not just for show. Mary, Queen of Scots, tonight at 9.30 on RTE1. Constantly refining. Constantly improving. That's been the Carlsberg way since 1847. The best kind of progress? Probably. AIB, we've always backed your belief with our competitive fixed rates, which is why whether you're looking to move, buy your first home, or switch your mortgage to AIB, we'll back you. We've also introduced the lowest evergreen mortgage rate for B3 or higher energy rated homes. Talk to our mortgage team or apply online at AIB.ie. AIB, we back belief. Out on the water, don't see the disability. They see Dorothy, they see John, they see James, they see us. That's why the boat is so important. I don't worry <laughs> whenever skies are gray and blue. <laughs> Got a pocket full of rainbows. Got it's for everybody. It's not just for people with disabilities. It's for everybody. It can be possible if you make it possible. To really get Gaelic football, you need to be of a certain type. Do you want to hear my response? This. All those can't compete like us looks. They're not from here talk. They're not built like us excuses. Enough. Bring all the things that make you who you are. Summers. Limerick have done it after 45 years. You will never forget. So let's make this summer one to remember. Now they have a chance for sporting immortality. It's right down and away we go. A touch of class, a moment of genius. Get a now sports membership half price for three months. It's there. Stream a summer to remember with now. Pretty surreal, so it is just realising that sometimes when you dream hard enough, they do come true. Kerry got, or Cork got off to an absolute flyer in Fitzgerald Stadium. They seemed to get so, so much right in the first half against Mike Kerry. At halftime, Kerry lead by five points. 
Approximately, I don't know, 45 minutes ago, Tomás O'Shea uttered the words, I can't see any way Cork can win this game today. Was there a moment there you were beginning to see yourself repeated as uh, all these montages towards the, the end of the year were played? Not really. There was a moment where you were thinking how sloppy and shambolic Kerry were playing and that they were, were they not up for it or were they not, you know, that hunger that was there early in the league, um, that drive that was there wasn't there. Cork were first every ball again and you were saying, is this going to go on the way it is? But they got themselves back into the game. Tom Sullivan came up the field a couple of times. Paddy Clifford has been very, very instrumental in getting them back into the game. Cork were doing the mistakes, giving ball away, taking shots they shouldn't, um, getting turnovers, but... I think there's a sense of inevitability about it right now unless Cork start this half off in a way where they can get a couple of scores quickly, you can see Kerry running away. Kerry were poor in that first half and they're still five points up, do you know? And that air of inv in inevitability, it was kick-started by that goal from Brino Buglia. Yeah, it was, surely. And, you know, this was their fourth, go their fourth goal chance. They they've missed three previous, uh, Clifford and Gainey missing a goal chance each. And you see... There isn't a hand laid on Brino Begley. He takes the ball outside the 65. And the Cork defenders are too worried about marking their own man. And he just waltzes through. And it's a good finish. But there hasn't been a hand laid on him. I think he's run about 70 or 80 metres. And they're all just worried about their own man. And, and, and not picking them up. And a good finish from a defender. Not so much worried about their own men, is it? As whom they consider the danger men. Is that what it is? Uh, a bit of both. But I think there's a couple of other points in, in the match as well where they're, they're very uh, man-marked uh, focused and, and they're, you know, when the shot is on, they're not coming to the, to the most dangerous forward uh, or defender at the time. So um, it, it's a bit about the, the, the dangerous forwards there, but they're very concerned about man-marking and, and, and picking up their own player. There are lots of big names who are playing in this today, but it was two brothers and not ones who have the surname Clifford who really took that, that first half yeah, by old. Yeah, very, very good first quarter. And Cork mixed up their game, Joanne. They mixed it by running, running at Cork uh, and then just definitely an emphasis on, on kick passing. But, you know, Kerry were at sixes and sevens for that first 15 minutes, which you can see uh, a great, great score by, by, by Hurley. And then E. McGuire, that directness, getting that ball in quickly, uh, Hurley gave Crowley a torrid time in the first 20-25 uh, minutes and they've, they've moved up leg like on, on him. But here's the goal. Uh, again, we spoke about this, getting that car carry quickly. It came from a, a Paul Murphy turnover. He's up the field. Donnick O'Connor's off with an injury and it's a ball down into the corner and Hurley sends his goal. He goes direct, takes on Crowley. Kerry are slow to get bodies back and uh, back of the net. And I think in fairness to Cork, you know, we spoke about before the game, what should they do? They've had a cut. They've came out and they've had a cut. As Cora said, they, they're playing man-to-man, -man, so they're very focused on their jobs defensively, and Kerry are getting overlaps, and they're getting easy. Kerry are, you know, you can see they are pushing on, and they're creating their chances very, very easily because of the risks Cork are taking. But in the first 20 minutes, they made, Cork, uh, they made Kerry look very, very average defensively and got at them. But as the game has progressed, like Paddy Clifford has been, he was immense in that first 15 minutes. He was the only Kerry forward that was really performing. Cork were keeping Clifford quiet. O'Shea, Sean O'Shea only came into it in the last you know, uh, 10 minutes and he kicked three scores. But as the game has progressed, Kerry are just beginning to take control. Because you, between you, you've described, used the words at sixes and sevens and shambolic to describe, describe Kerry's first half or early stages of the first half performance. But how much of that was down to the aggression shown by Cork? Yeah, well, what other way were they going to show up? They had to show up with a bit of aggression and with a bit of fire. It's, I, I was talking about was 1-8 they scored last year from turnover. In that first half, Cork have scored 1-4 from the direct turnovers. Um, now, very like Galway today, if Cork come back in the second half and Kerry kick on and Kerry up it, because they will be spoken to at halftime. But if Cork can show up in that second half with the intensity that they showed up in the first half and get tag on a couple of early scores. One area, I think, Sean Powder's playing at centre-back. Sean Powder's biggest strength is attacking the ball. Why is he marking Sean Shea? Like, Sean Shea is one of the key guys you're going to have to mark on. Put him out on, on Stephen O'Brien. Let Stephen O'Brien fall back and let Sean Powder cause wreck. I think they're losing a trick there with Sean Powder marking the, the biggest, Sean The biggest Shea. disappointment they'd have is in that first 20, 15, 20 minutes, Cork looked like they wanted it more. And they were yeah. more tenacious and they were turning over Kerry. And after all the talk of last year and what happened down in Parky Cueve, you were expecting Kerry to make a statement. They were slow out of the blocks, but you can just see there is that difference in yeah. class between the two teams. You wouldn't be happy with that Kerry performance in the first half. There's too many fellas going through, not going through the motions, but not being snappy enough. David Clifford is off at a small bit and, and Paul Ganey's off at a small bit. They'll, they'll need to up it, and I think they will. 
OK, well, you never know. It could be a strong start to the second half as well from Cork. They did win last year's, of course. The second half is... They travel from all four corners. A journey of thousands who become... Few things say summer quite like the Galway races. Come rain or shine, it's the chance to savour some top-class competition between horses and hats and featuring the historic Tote Galway Plate. Jump racing at its best over 14 breathtaking fences. We're live for the first four days of one of Ireland's best-loved festivals. The Galway Races starts Monday at 5 on RTE2 and RTE Player. Here I go Just me and my mind My mind Open up your weekend and find your escape with the Independent at the Weekend. Grass-fed and 100% Irish. Everyone loves Oh, you mean Mr. Personality, is it? <laughs> Your man thinks he's the best thing since... Well, you know yourself, like. <sighs> yeah, yeah, we all know he's quite fresh, like. But sure we all are, aren't we? Totally. Oh, mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Like pure notion since he won that Blasting Heron Award. <laughs> we've all won awards, like. There's no need to go on about this. Beef! Well, those here want to come down at the end of all you don't know in the Battle of Adams. Everyone loves Lidl beef. Well, almost everyone. Lidl. More for you. Swappy. Smart phones. Smarter prices. Reliable and affordable with a 12-month warranty. travel. So whenever you're ready to travel again, Dublin Airport and Cork Airport are ready to help. Supervalue believe in community. And community includes everyone. RT Sport have teamed up with Carton House, a Fairmont managed hotel, to give you the chance to win a three night stay in the house, their 18th century Palladian style mansion located in County Kildare. While you're there, you'll enjoy the finest of dining experiences with breakfast each morning, as well as an afternoon tea, lunch, and dinner. And of course, there's a round of golf on either of their championship courses, followed by a relaxing spa treatment for two. To go along with your three night stay, there's also 3,000 euro spending money. For your chance to win, answer this question. Which of these players currently plays for the Kilkenny Senior Hurling Team? Is it Joe Canning, Tony Kelly, 
or TJ Reid. To enter, call 15 17 71 71 74 or text the word GAME followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost two euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Tuesday the 3rd of August. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed. We're watching events in Killarney at the moment where Kerry lead the Munster football final at halftime, 1-12-2-7 against Cork. But of course, earlier here at Croke Park, Mayo saw off Galway to win the Connacht football final. Now, we did have that injury to Pork O'Hara in the second half and there was a long break and there were worrying scenes there. We've asked Mayo and we've, been to we've asked Mayo about this and we've been told that Pork is OK, he's fine, he has a damaged rib, but the good news is he is OK. So I'm sure there were lots of people very much so concerned about him at home. Now, as for Kerry and Cork, obviously a, a, a bit of a hill for Cork to climb in the second half, but do they have the capabilities and what do they have to do? Because obviously Kerry have cut off what was working well for them early on. What can they do? Changing goalkeeper. Yeah, I actually mentioned him as being a, he's a boomer, a kicker. boomer of a kicker. Yeah. Um, that's Mark White from Clonakilty, and, do you and think he this does. Is tactical? I do. I think it is tactical. I think Kerry squeezed up on Michal Martin in that first half, and I think uh, going on the numbers, the, the half kickouts going long were lost. So is this it, guy is, can actually hit the opposite like sixty. Cork going into the wind. There seems to be a bit of wind blowing down there as well, and maybe they, they went long in the first half. Maybe they just want yeah. to keep that as part of their game that it's he doesn't have the one. range of kick. It has no, to be, be for the kick-out. It's, it's, it's only mm. for the kick-out because he did make... Michal Martin made a couple of good saves there in the first half, so it is a kick-out. But I worry for Cork in the final third of the pitch because Kerry have got to grips with their own defence and their work rate out around the middle. So then you're worried that Cork will fold at the back. They've, and got, that's to release, the they've got to release Powder and have a run yeah. at them and try and create yeah. overlaps. They, 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 there's no point in sitting back to five points down at this point. They're going to have to have a go. OK, here you go. Kerry are leading going into the second half by five points. Cork need to start the second just like they did the first and try to overcome this five-point deficit. Let's head back now to Fitzgerald Stadium and to Desi and Jer. Thank you, Joanne. Quite something to change your goalkeeper in the middle of a monster final. Mark White coming in for his eighth ever championship game. Missed last year's campaign. His last game would have been in the Super 8s in Croke Park against Tyrone in 2019. It's, uh, of course, the first monster final here for four years. Kerry won four years ago by a margin of 11. They're five up now, ready to go for the second half. First half, by the way, with very, very few scores from frees. Only one point from Kerry's tally of 112 was from a free, and only one point from Cork's tally of uh, 17 was from a mark. Second half gets underway. So now, what's going to happen? What happens is that there's an immediate pull down there by Brian Hartnett. Which might have been uh, the kind of tackle you might have seen if you were watching the Lions. Here's David Clifford. Fumbled it. Was it picked off the ground? Yep. It's a great battle that Sean Meehan, David Clifford. He just fumbled for a split second, touched the ball on the ground, free out. But interesting, Jared, that water break. Uh, since that water break, the Kerry team scored 1 8 and oh. Cork only got two points. There's another pull back that time. And it is Sean Powder who was uh, pulled down, and the referee might take a little bit of action this time. Yeah, when everything was struggling against Limerick, Sean Powder came up trumps and Tomas and Kieran both mentioned about his ability to run up the pitch and who has been missed in the first half. Certainly, that's a big improvement so far. So if he can keep getting him attacking, it certainly will add to the Cork offensive plan. Brian Hurley kicked a goal and two points in the first half. So this possible free, possible score from a free, 45 metres out from the target. Lobs in and lobs the wrong side of the post. That's eight wides now by Cork. And they're yeah. a kind of a team, Desi, that needs to be taking a high percentage of those kind of chances. Yeah, we, you would say their accuracy is at 50% for the first half. It'd be disappointed. Most teams want to get between 60 and 70%, so it's down on what you would expect. And as you said, playing against this team, they need to be kicking everything. That time the foul was by Michael Hurley. Shane Ryan now. Jason Foley, half a year now, I think, to be out around right corner back. Here's Paul Murphy, ready to take off 
past a couple of Cork players, and this time he holds on too long, and the referee whistles and gives the free to Cork. Great pressure from the Cork team again, and that's what we needed uh, to come out with the same aggression they showed in the first 15, 20 minutes of the first half. Rory Dean, a player who seems to relish playing against the Kingdom. Oh, that's the wrong side of Ian Maguire, but it might just fall kindly for Cork and Maddie Taylor. Dean again, well, this time it's Michael Hurley being held back. Kevin Flahiv played in here, it was intended for Taylor, out very quickly. Stephen O'Brien shown the kind of determination Kerry requires. Killian Spillane, Mike Bree now. Chance to move forward, Jack Barry. Looking for Kerry's first proper attack at the second half. He was contemplating what might happen, and in came Powder. Sean Powder from Douglas. Looking to get the opening score of the second half. He's travelled a fair distance. Maguire, shoulder there, kept alive. Dean, back it comes. Key and Kylie up into the air. It's going to drop short. Fisted out. Hart, it comes towards it, but it's taken very well there by Jack Barry, and he's held, and a free out for Kerry. And nothing comes from those two opening attacks by Cork. Meanwhile, Shawnee O'Shea is completely unmarked because of that brilliant long pass. Ganey waits for it, has it, here's a chance, and he rolls it in under Mark White. Kerry with a second goal. Paul Ganey, his 12th ever. Now really is a killer for this Cork team. Sean powdered extremely well, but Sean O'Shea found himself in space, and as all great players do, give the ball to the right man. The right man in that instance was Paul Ganey. He found himself in a space, kept it low, and Mark White couldn't get it near that. Great finish, and Kerry very much now on top. Sean O'Shea setting it up brilliantly. Ganey full of intent, cool and clinical with his finish. 2 12, 2 1 setup. Now, more like the scoreline people have anticipated, we would be seeing. Yeah, and they'd be frustrated. Court Ron McCarthy, in particular, did so many opportunities to knock the ball over the bar after Sean Powder dispossessed Jack Barry. Very frustrating passage of play, passage of play for this Cork team. Breen back to O'Brien. Not a lot of football to be played in this match. Cork need to stand up strongly. Kerry looking to try and punish every error at this stage. They have the players, they have the forwards. Paul Ganey. Going around one or two. Then this chance for David Clifford. Not his day so far in a scoring sense. He's drawn a blank. Yes, Paul Ganey spotted him coming on the outside, giving the ball to him in time and space. And David Clifford has a tough afternoon marking Sean Meehan. He did an exceptional job and throughout the match. And David Clifford, unusually, or uncharacteristic, a lot of opportunities today. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons, Desi, why Mark White was brought in, that long, booming kick-out, but it's been picked up by Kerry and Stephen O'Brien, and if you can't win that kind of kick-out, doesn't matter what goalkeeper you have in there. Killian Spillane. They're rampant again. It's Pawdy Clifford. Maddie Taylor trying to keep him out. Taylor fists it and scores. Uh, he really is a class act, Pawdy Clifford. His share price is escalating immensely but like his ability to work hard to find himself in space you can see the skill he was on the ground got up very quickly great balance time and a fabulous score by Paddy Clifford his third of the day coming on now is uh, Mark Collins he's coming on in place of uh, Luke Collins or Luke uh, Connolly I should say just when I was about to say that Cork had a team with a Matthew Mark Luke and a John in it and they take off Luke <laughs> Mark Collins, excellent player for Cork, great servant, great experience. He needed it all coming into this cauldron at the minute. Referee going across and having a word, and it's a, a yellow card for Dan Deneen, and that is the first yellow card issued by the match referee in this game, Barry Cassidy from Derry. Sean Meehan. Kevin Flav, ready to go again, showing lots of pace, running into challenges, and the ball just turned over. And that's an elementary mistake, really, for a player of his standard. Ganey, back as far as Killian Spillane. Now they are rampant. Back once again, David Clifford. Tom O'Sullivan was there. Paul Ganey blocked down. Coming out with it in the end was uh, 
Kevin O'Donovan out as far as Brian Hartnett. Backs to the wall situation. Chance to break now through Ian Maguire. Can he inspire this court team to put in a decent second half? Looking for their first score, and we're already seven and a half minutes into that. Michael Hurley with two points early on. He was thinking of what he was going to do next, and the hand was being held. Yeah. The nearest to him was Jason Foley. Just look now, Michael Hurley. He was shouting at the referee, Barry Cassidy. Do you see the block down there from the Cork players? And Mark just introduced. Colm O'Callaghan is the one who comes on in place of Dan Deneen. O'Callaghan, who was a star of the under 20 success against Dublin a couple of years ago. And Mark Collins has an opportunity, having just come on, of doing something about the current scoreline, but that's brilliantly taken back there. David Moore in helping out. Paddy Clifford, three points to his name already. Challenged there by Colm O'Callaghan, fouled by O'Callaghan. They've really struggled to score in the last just a long time, so half an hour you could say. They've poor wides from freeze, struggling to create good opportunities, and it's a struggle right now for Cork. Really good first quarter for Cork, but after that it's been Kerry, Stephen O'Brien. Again, it's Paddy Clifford. He's everywhere. Murphy. Mike Green now, ready to go forward. Dean and O'Callaghan are after him, almost like playing chasing, and they just can't catch up with him. Tom O'Sullivan. Gavin White. Jack Barry. One of the goal scorers, Brian Obiagli. David Moran made a catch back in his own defence a few moments ago. Cutting through. Bagley again. David Clifford. In case of who wants to try and kick it over the bar. Maybe Stephen O'Brien hasn't scored so far. Jack Barry has. And Jack Barry finishes it off and gets a point in each half. We've seen David Moran commanding the square, catching the ball. And we see him up there creating good opportunities for his Kerry team. You can see the swift uh, interchange. Stephen O'Brien, very honest, hard-working player. Lovely layoff there, and Jack Barry with his left foot, good finish. Just illustrates the authority that David Moran is capable of bringing to Kerry's midfield. There's uh, a blood stop here, and uh, Stephen O'Brien forced off. Tommy and the uh, player is going to replace him will be Tommy Walsh. Mark White's kick into the middle of the park. David Moran rises, touches Paul Ganey. There were three Cork players around him, and he still rose above them. Paul Murphy. Nicely down here as far as Paul D. Clifford. Absolutely tormenting Cork this afternoon. And that finishes in the back of the net. And Shawnee O'Shea has his goal as well. And that's a goal and four for him now. And it's another one for Kerry with 46 minutes on the clock. That man again, Paddy Clifford. As he takes that ball, difficult possession, turns his man, comes along the sideline. But as you look, you can see him lifting his head for the pass. He wanted to give the pass across. He waited for Sean O'Shea to get him in the right position. Played it across, back of the net for this Kerry team. But what play again, and vision by this man, Paddy Clifford. More changes being made, but we'll watch this one again anyway, because it's well worth seeing. And that is O'Shea's third ever championship goal coming on now is Kevin O'Driscoll and uh, he's going to come on and there he is in the middle of the park the player who went off is Michael Hurley did his stuff in the opening 15 minutes but uh, ball hasn't been going in Cork haven't been doing an awful lot and it's pretty much as expected. 3.14 to 1.7. I make it 2-2, two, two, Desi, since the halftime break for yeah, Kerry. and David Moran is commanding this match out around the middle. You've seen the, the high ball coming. We talked about Mark White coming in for the long kick out. David Moran went up, placed it down, or broke it down perfectly to Paul Ganey. And all of a sudden, again, the ball is in the back of the net. So 
Cork have struggled to uh, operate a functional kick-out system where they can win clean possession. They're going along all throughout the game, and it's not really working. Cork haven't scored since the 32nd minute, and uh, three minutes of that before we get to 25. Oh, there we go, and it is Gavin White. White, still going. And, whoo, somehow, it ends, ends up in the net. Ganey punches the air with delight. The fans are loving it now, rubbing it into Cork's noses. And we can see that man, Gavin White. I'm not sure how many steps he took in all of this. He seemed to be under pressure, got the ball away. Sean O'Shea crossed and eventually found its way. And that man, Paul Ganey, back in the net. Great finish. So that's goal number four. 14 to 1 7. Several players involved. And Cork simply ripped apart. Shawnee O'Shea again. Back to Paddy Clifford. Kerry players now just enjoying this keep ball session for them. Rory Dean trying to get the hand in, dispossess him. Nobody's been able to match Paddy Clifford in this match so far. Cork without a score, score in the second half. That's uh, Kevin O'Donovan. Looks to be injured. Well, we're 40 minutes into the second half, and uh, five minutes of the first half were still to play when Cork got their last score. So, with the match, it's about 19 minutes since uh, they last scored. Yeah, and the, the half time change, the long kickouts, just seems to be the issue. Um, David Moore is commanding that area and instead of going short keeping keep retaining possession they're continuing to bomb it down long and it's not working and as a result a lot of scores are coming from that not sure if uh, Mark White will thank everybody for leaving him on for the second half <laughs> yeah the, an interesting duel now will, it, can Sean Meehan keep David Clifford scoreless for the rest of the match because as far as I make it he hasn't scored so far and he's done an incredible job and I don't think that happens too often this is uh, Kevin O'Donovan, and this is where we think he got injured. And uh, he's forced out, as you know. So Cork are now going to have to introduce their fifth and final sub. No, thank you. Of Kerry's total of 4-14. All bar one point from open play. Flahu runs into the challenge. Boots it ahead here. Taken in well by Colm O'Callaghan. Blocked down very well taken by Jack Barry almost nonchalantly out by Jason Foley drilled away down by Paul Ganey augmenting the defence as if they needed him Johnny O'Shea down it comes to David Clifford still looking for his first score in this match Sean Meehan has done a marvellous job and here he is again and this time he's found going bending his back Sean O'Shea came in and caught him it's incredible performance from the Cork player. Sean, or David Clifford is so elusive on either foot, and it's a real jewel. It's very enjoyable to watch. New player in for Cork is Kevin Crowley from Mill Street. John O'Rourke. Chance here at the other end. Brian Hurley, blocked down, comes back out, still in play. Hurley goes again, a little chip up here. Looking for the first score of the second half. Hurley says, give it to me. And he has managed to blast it the wrong side of the upright. And that's wide number nine by Cork. And the concern for Peter Keane is the, the, the ability for the opposition teams to run through the heart of the carry defence, and that concerns him. Today, Cork did score a goal. They can see the goal against Clear as well, and I suppose that's the big question. Can they stop conceding them goals and stop the team? Desi, if they can keep on scoring four yeah, goals and 14 yeah. points, and most of that from open play, it's hard to know who can stand up against them. It's fair enough. <laughs> Brian Oviagli went block. down courageously, got a little block on that, and it was still in play after that.
Of Bialgli now leaving the contest, it would appear. They have three subs that they can bring on still. Oh, it's just beginning to hot up a little bit yeah, now. Yeah, might, and Brian Hurley just... Barry Cassidy is right beside the two players, so... Some fans rubbing their hands with glee. He wanted to see a bit of action. It's not going to be an episode of Love Island after all. It's the Monster, Monster Football Final. Words with uh, Brian Hurley. Notebooks coming out. So it's a, a yellow card here for Brian Hurley to go with his goal and two points. All scored in the first half. Kerry and Graham O'Sullivan. He is a, a cornerback anyway, so he'll be able to fit into that full back line there alongside Jason Foley and Tom O'Sullivan. Tom O'Sullivan. Well, the first part of the first half gave Cork every opportunity to come out to show what they're made of, to stand up strongly against a, a super team in Kerry. But once Kerry began to get into their rhythm, there was simply no stopping them. And that uh, goal before half time by Brian O'Bagley simply cemented the lead, which they have built on very strongly. And they're still going forward. Graham O'Sullivan back here. Tommy Walsh taking it. I know Cork were talking before the match about the preparation being very good and so on, but they were still playing in Division 2, and before that, they were playing in Division 3 the previous year. You can't really take on the likes of Kerry in the Munster Championship coming from that relatively low base. Yeah, you need to be competing in the top division. Sean O'Shea will take this. Goal at four points. Surely need to be meeting the Dubs and the Donegals and the Mayos and the Galways and so on, and Kerry on a regular basis earlier on in the year. But this was a peculiar year. Nothing peculiar about the way in which Kerry are going about their business right now. It's a goal and five for Shawnee O'Shea. Get to the water break. And uh, Cork have not scored in the third quarter. Their last score was in the 32nd minute. Let's go down to our reporter, Damien Lawler. Thank you, Ger. It's a, a very subdued Cork dugout here in front of me. Just a few moments after the Cork team came off for the restart, I noticed that uh, Michal Martin, uh, the Cork goalkeeper who had been substituted at halftime, he entered uh, the dugout with his right shoulder heavily strapped and an ice pack around it as well. Uh, clearly very disappointed here in front of me as well. So um, while there was a lot of talk about the kick-out strategy, uh, he certainly has come out with that uh, shoulder heavily, heavily strapped as well. Uh, Kerry have absolutely no intention of, of easing up by the looks of things. Peter Keane is up in the stand every so often uh, chatting tactically with Morris Fitzgerald and even on the uh, Cork puck out, Kerry goalkeeper Shane Ryan is being encouraged to push right up so Kerry not finished yet at all Ger. Thank you indeed Damien, that makes sense now Michal Martin I uh, imagine would never have been substituted based upon what he's been doing so far in the championship but clearly there is uh, a problem there with that shoulder and uh, Damien was mentioning Morris Fitzgerald. He got four points against Cork here the last time that Cork actually won in 1995. They uh, won in Killarney. Colin Corkery got uh, a lot of scores that day for Cork. Seven. Don Davis got three. Even Niall Cahalan was a point scorer all of 26 years ago. Some Cork people have decided, we used to say, to get there ahead of the crowd, but the crowd was 2,500. I think they've just decided uh, the best will in the world. I don't think we're going to win today. Yeah. The kick out anyway will be the next thing we shall see, Desi. Yeah, it's been a struggle for Cork since the first initial water break. Only two points in that period of time. Just interesting to note the performance of Gavin White again from half back line doing extremely well. And the man that's really changed the fortunes is Paulie Clifford in terms of his attacking ability. Two players that have really added an awful lot to the dimension to the attacking dimension of this Kerry team. Kerry have uh, made a change with uh, number 10, Michal Burns, coming in. Well, he's another player with wonderful pace, penetrating ability. Plays just across the road here in Dr. Croaks. He'll be glad to get on for the last 15 minutes of the 2021 Munster Final. 
Scott Carey poised to win the title for the 82nd time. Big kick into the middle. David Moran touches it down. This time Corker anticipating. John O'Rourke got there. Out as far as Kevin O'Driscoll to Brian Hartnett. Now Mark Collins. And people who felt he perhaps should have been starting this game. And now Mihal Burns, head down, hunched shoulders, away he goes. Determined fashion, players in support right and left to him. Ganey's just ahead, gives it off to him. The challenge comes in, Ganey kicks from outside the D. And it goes up into the air, but goes where he didn't anticipate it going, wide of the target. Kerry's sixth wide in the match. Adrian Spillane is the next man who will come in. They're going off as Jack. So the two Spillans are in at this stage, sons of Tom Spillane, of course. Sean Meehan. I think he'll be very happy with the way in which he has uh, managed to perform during this game. And here he is again, down around his bootlaces, picking it up. Oh, it's a slack pass this time. Intercepted. And David Moran provides the fodder for Michal Burns again to go in pursuit of the next score with Killian Spillan. The heads have completely dropped now at this stage. Not a score for Cork in the second half. O'Shea again. Paul Murphy would fancy one. Don't think it's managed to go in. The left, it's either left hand up right. Great play again with Sean O'Shea attacking. Cutting across the Cork defender. Laying it off to the right man and Paul Murphy just pulled it narrowly wide. Well, Paul Murphy will be very, very pleased to be down there, hoping to receive the cup in a short while from now. And Stephen O'Brien's coming back on. It was only a temporary substitution. And uh, Paul Ganey is the one who's going off. They have such a richness in the forward line. Mark White's kick out into the centre. Kevin O'Driscoll touched it down. And it's uh, Donald Rourke who's managed to get his hands on it initially and then give it to Powder. Sean Powder, who's uh, down, of course, comes from Australia. Brian Hurley. Ian Maguire. Cork looking for a bit more respectability in terms of the score now at this stage. Brian Hurley. Fisting it in here. Is there a score with this attack? Somebody's going to take on the responsibility. It's the captain, Ian Maguire. And finally, Cork managed to get themselves a second half score by Ian Maguire in the 56th minute. There's David Clifford on the sideline with Tommy Griffin. So coming back in is uh, Brian O'Biagli, patched up, and he is going to uh, replace Graham O'Sullivan, I think. So off goes Graham O'Sullivan, he's had his couple of minutes on here. Former UCC player, knows uh, quite a number of these Cork fellas, I'm sure, pretty well, played Sigerson Cup football with them. Burns gone as well. Paulie Clifford's jersey being tugged back by Matty Taylor. Mike Breen. Tommy Walsh now. And the referee has blown back the play. Free into Kerry. Yeah, and that man, Paddy Clifford, out around the middle, winning the kick out, won his free, but as soon as the whistle blew, he was on again, moving the ball up to the forward line. So great awareness as well, offering lots of different aspects to his game. That's how that's stop line. Chance for David Clifford. Yeah, hasn't scored, as you and I know. Very rarely happens.
So will this be his opening point of the Munster final? It is. It's come from a free. He once scored two goals and eight points in a minor match against Cork. Of course, he tormented so many minor teams in his minor days and has continued in similar vein at uh, senior championship level. Just today, didn't quite work out for him, but it's worked out for his colleagues. Mark Collins now. Forward here as far as Powter. Into space goes Brian Hartnett. They've got one point in the second half. And they're trying to go forward and try and see if they can get a second one now. And that one is uh, kicked into the goalkeeper's hands. Shane Ryan beaten once. That was way back along after 17 minutes by Brian Hurley. Stephen O'Brien. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Paddy Clifford. An angle ball across here, which is well cut out by Sean Meehan. Kicked away by Matty Taylor. John O'Rourke. Here's Dean. And he's dispossessed there by Mike Breen. All of this with about eight and a bit minutes still to go of the 70, limping away from that, Rory Dean. Mark Collins. Hold left, party, hold left, party. Offering some direction. Taking it back here. Maguire. Rory Dean again. Brian Hurley. Booting it, but booting it very poorly indeed. Sums up the second half for Cork and indeed for sums up about three quarters of the game for Cork. Yeah, after such a bright start and to see the supporters leaving, they've really struggled you know, to create good opportunities in the second and third part of the game. It's been such a struggle for the players. Thomas Sullivan and company will be looking ahead now to the uh, match next Saturday at Croke Park, the Ulster final, because they will be playing the winners in the All-Ireland semi. Tyrone or Monaghan. Gavin White, oh, getting away from Kean Kylie. Good transfer. Stephen O'Brien, little chip up out over the bar. He's got his point. So everybody in the starting forwards, I think, has now managed to score. Gavin White's after pulling up there. This is interesting. He's been very effective. Once he gets time and space, he can just drive at the defence. You can see him here. Again, the ball going, being laid off to the right man into space, and Stephen O'Brien backs up with a fantastic score. But the Kerry players, quick interchange. And you can see Gavin White, when he gets an opportunity to run at the heart of defence, you just won't catch him. Might be a calf injury affecting him. Gavin White requiring attention. Late into the game, 64 minutes in. And now it's Gavin Crowley's turn to get a chance to come in. He was uh, selected to start, at least in the list that we were given. Coming on in Tom O'Sullivan. Two points in the first half for him. And Gavin White's OK, limping back into the action. Fisted down. Chance for Ian Maguire to make some headway here. Able to take it back. Is there a goal for him? Answer is no. Just typical what's happening that this afternoon. But Ian Maguire, this is what I've seen with Kerry defence. They, they do give opportunities for the opposition. And Ian Maguire, if he got any good contact on it, that could have got the ball to the back of the net. He just pulled it to the left and wide. I'll make it a, an 18-point lead so far. You do the maths there, Desi, you're pretty good. It's exactly what uh, many people had been anticipating. And Ian McGuire now is after pulling up around the field there, so another concern for the Cork team. Stephen O'Brien, meanwhile, and Paddy Clifford, ready to torment their opponents once again. John O'Rourke wrapping his hands around him, a little push in the back there by Brian Hartnett. All very frustrating for the Cork players. So here comes Ty Morley.
off goes Gavin White. So lots of changes, lots of players able to come in and experience playing here in the uh, the heat of the Munster Championship final. David Moran walloping it in. Cork able to bring it back out again through Key and Kylie. Kevin Crowley getting his hands on it. Yeah, he's been hampered by a lot of injuries as well. They've had injuries coming in. Roland McCarthy was talking about it. Lost a number of players in the build-up to this. Kevin O'Driscoll. Brian Hartnett now stepping away from trouble, not once but twice. Out to O'Driscoll again. Rory Dean. And that is Brian Hurley fisting it across there, but nobody in a cork shirt able to get a decisive and final touch. Space everywhere now, Ger. Especially with three and a half minutes to go and the handsome lead. And Stephen O'Brien in full flow. And able to take that little touch back towards him. Tommy Walsh there to help. And then it's David Clifford. Pulled down. Referee allows play to continue, but he was pulled down. It looked like a penalty to me, but the referee's given for outside the box. Pulled down, dragged down. Let's have a look at it here, yeah. You can see getting the ball. Uh, just narrowly outside, yeah. Good call by Barry Cassidy. You can see that wild challenge. Mark Collins, the number 23, who caught him. End result is going to be uh, a 20, or maybe now a 13 metre free. And it'll be Sean O'Shea who will take it. He's got a goal and five in this his 17th ever championship match. Another successful day in the Monster final for Kerry. And you're winning back the title for the first time in two years. And look at the overall performance of this Kerry team. You'd look at a very strong squad of players, they have a big bench, talented forwards, and we've seen the impact the defence have made. The likes of Gavin White attack in Thomas Sullivan, two points, Brian O'Begley in the first half, creating that goal to really open up the match for this Kerry team. Well, they were caught late on after extra time in Porky Cueve last November. They weren't going to get caught here. Genuine contenders for Dublin's title. No doubt about that, I think. Ian Maguire in as far as Brian Hartnett. And that time it's blocked out again by the excellent Brian O'Biagli. Paul Murphy, the captain. And the runner, Stephen O'Brien. Off they move again. Adrian Spillane providing it in there. Shawnee O'Shea controlling. Back it goes and fisted up and over the bar by Tide Morley, who's just come in. So he gets among the scorers as well. Yeah, we've seen the ball coming in here. Great diagonal ball to Sean O'Shea. And it shows his great awareness and maturity. He could have knocked it over himself. He placed it back to the better position. And Tyg Morley knocked it over the bar. But we've seen that time and time again with this Kerry defence or the attacking forward unit is that they're giving the ball to the right man all the time. The, the man in the better position is getting it and ensuring of the score. Ten different scorers now by Kerry. Cork, remember, with one solitary point in the second half that means they've now gone uh, 30 more than 35 minutes with just one point because they didn't score for the last five minutes including the couple of minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first half so a miserable return for them meanwhile Kerry in full flow just lording it savoring every moment Killian Spillane's got a point in each half the ball caught by Paul Murphy but as soon as he hit, touched the ground, it was released. Quick ball into Sean O'Shea. And we can see the hand pass again. He's scored 1-6, but he's provided an awful lot of scores as well, Sean O'Shea. It's a 21-point lead so far for Kerry against Cork. That's way above, I think, what most people were guessing. But then those goals, the four goals, they mattered so much. Three coming in the second half. Rory Dean picking up Brian Hurley able to we're looking to get it back runs away from him 
body Clifford it's like a magnet it just <laughs> reaches him every time such great balance great awareness he's back in midfield getting ball he's back in the defense he's great control his passing is fantastic right now they are mesmerizing this Cork team have done so throughout the second half Mike Breen now stepping up it's easy when you're this far ahead Cork looking bedraggled and that's kicked the wrong side of the post this time something to work on but just a little yeah he's frustrated you can see a little smile to himself uh, just Sean Mean has done extremely well he hasn't been on his usual game so he missed a couple of good opportunities today but I'm sure it'll be normal service resumed as he heads up to Crow Park Desi if you were to say that Kerry were going to win handsomely and David Clifford would get just one point from a free and yet the team would be ahead by 21 points incredible. 10 different scorers incredible and Amazing. I suppose that's the pressure that's going to be on this Kerry team going forward. People are saying Dublin are dropping off the face a little bit in terms of their squad. And it's a great opportunity for these boys heading to Grove Park. 21 down, injured at the present time for Kerry is Tommy Walsh. One of those to get caught late on in the match last November when that ball came in from Luke Connolly and uh, Cork finished with a late, late winning goal. Yeah, you can see in the background they just lashed out the hand and it's a wild, a wild tackle there by Rory Dean. I don't think anyone picked him. The linesman and Barry Cassidy are having a chat here now, so. Yeah. That's one over there is Derek O'Mahony from Tipperary. So, does it deserve a card? Is that what's going to happen? We're already, as you can see, four minutes into stoppage time. Yeah, he certainly lashed out. So. Rory Dean. So the colour of the card for Rory to compound a horrible day for Cork and for Rory Dean. They finish with 14. Dean sent off deep into stoppage time. Just not nice to see it. A frustrated character leaving the pitch, Rory Dean. And the referee pointing to where the uh, free kick is going to be taken by Brian Hurley. <laughs> referee having a, a word there with Tommy Walsh as well. And he's got a, a yellow. So for his part in that. All of which delays the inevitable anyway. Brian Hurley looking for one late score of little consequences just for the uh, record books. It'll show that he scored a goal and three on the day Kerry came to Fitzgerald Stadium. Desi, what about your thoughts on man of the match? Well, some excellent displays for this Kerry team um, throughout the pitch. Obviously, Paulie Clifford has been excellent. You've seen Paul likes Paul Ganey, but Sean O'Shea for me, 1 6, has been incredible today, and I think he deserves man of the match. On a day when there are many star players, here comes Mike Breen. Breen, and he has touched it over. It's another one, and he becomes the 11th player to score for Kerry this afternoon and now they have a, a lead here of uh, 421 to 1-9. Final few moments of this game. Mark Collins... Sean Powter <laughs> held on to with some difficulty here. Colm O'Callaghan. <laughs> that one, uh, David Clifford held, so it's going to be David Clifford who boots this one all the way down. Shawnee O'Shea, one of the stars, there were quite a few. Tommy Walsh, and he fancies getting among the scorers as well. It's quite a rout. I think that's what Tommy Walsh will offer this Kerry team going forward, is that he can make an impact off the bench. Big physical player, and obviously with the offensive mark that's been introduced, he can offer a lot. 
Kerry were 1 12 at half time. What a second half they've had. Four goals and 10 points they've added to that. And they are the monster champions for 2021. As utterly and devastatingly convincing as it has ever been against the old rivals from Cork, who had a good first quarter but floundered after that pretty quickly and could only score two points in the second half. Desi, sum it up for us, please. Yeah, complete performance after the first 20 minutes for Peter Keane. He'd be absolutely delighted. There's a bit of pressure coming onto this game. But there's so many aces. That man, Paddy Clifford, was excellent again today. They got the grips defensively. The move of Brian O'Begley back into the full back line worked extremely well on Brian Hurley. But throughout the match, they dominated in every position. The likes of David Moore in midfield has been excellent. Concern of going forward with Jeremy O'Connor, he picked up an injury in the first half. But offensively, just so many aces. Paul Ganey, David Clifford obviously has... But he will be back. Paulie Clifford, Sean O'Shea and Stephen O'Brien worked extremely hard. So going forward and going up to Crow Park, to HQ, this is a team with real... Uh, Serious contenders for winning All-Ireland now and with the strength of their bench, a lot of players introduced. We've seen Paul Murphy, the captain was introduced before the game, but Killian Splan, Tommy Walsh, all these players have a lot to offer off the bench and a very strong performance and a very good display by this Kerry team. Cork may have won last year with a late-minute goal, last-minute goal. This time Kerry won by 22 points. Final score, Kerry is four goals and 22 points. Cork, one goal and nine. Pretty surreal, so it is just realising that sometimes when you dream hard enough, they do come true. Welcome to Go Outside and Play, famous locations. We're back for another series, and this time, I'm not alone. I've brought a friend who happens to be on wheels. Meet Carl Doyle. I am a terrible swimmer. I'd love to rescue you, but like, I haven't mastered walking. <laughs> Together, we're venturing across our great island in search of epic locations that you may just recognize from the big and small screen. Check out the new series of Go Outside and Play, available now on RTE Player. Oh, excellent. Broadband optimized. Guys, this is good, but we need to think ahead. What about the future? Broadband optimized. But what about the future? Broadband optimized. We did it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Let's go again. When it comes to broadband, we'll never stop. Virgin Media, bring on amazing. Anytime we call me up, we keep it fresh. I like to keep it fresh. Anything I spray right now is fresh. Baraka helps keep you on. Why get one quote when you can get 14? Chill talk to over 14 insurers to find you the best deal. Chill Insurance. We'll take it from here. Enjoy a range of Tesco finest burgers made with 100% Irish Angus beef from Ford Bia Quality Assured Farms. Food Love Stories, brought to you by Tesco. As tourism and hospitality businesses reopen across Ireland, you'll want to know you're safe. Folger Ireland's COVID-19 safety charter symbol means you'll know that business is agreeing to follow the recommended cleaning and safety guidelines, supported by staff training. So you can enjoy yourself with confidence. I love nothing better than you, my chili pepper. Although your totes amaze, you can set my belly ablaze. But now, thanks to Rennie, Dinner's supremo for me and my jalapeno. What are you doing? Turn excess acid into water for fast, effective relief from heartburn. Rennie, fall back in love with food. 
Coast Stena Line, every journey is made for you. We make it just right. La gone. As it's said in Sweden, it's time spent well with friends and family. Relaxing, comfortable spaces and simple but perfect surroundings. Caring for one another. Understanding that big little things can make a big difference. Enjoy a carcation to Britain or Europe. Travel safely and in style from only 139 euro single car and driver. Book today at stenaline.ie. Clearly great taste, clearly refreshing, clearly 7-Up free. That one day is what you live for. Winning the whole thing is what you dream of. Don't forget to join Ivan and the lads from Half Nine tonight on the Sunday game. And we're back with live hurling quarter final and provincial football final action next week on both Saturday and Sunday. Down in Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney, there is Paul Murphy, captain of the Kerry footballers. Kerry, Munster champions for the 83rd time. 22-point win over Cork this afternoon. Very much so getting revenge on what happened last November. Cora, it kind of reminded me of Dona Logue talking about Limerick and Tipperary in the hurling equivalent last week. He said Tipperary poked the bear and got absolutely mauled. Yeah, I think the second half was yeah probably hard enough watch. Um, it's probably an exciting 20 minutes of the game, and you know once the Brino Begley goal went in, it was probably game over. Um, Kerry were good, but they've still a lot to improve on. They were sloppy at times. Yeah, they scored 3-10 in the in the second half to to Cork's two points, but you know it wasn't you know a performance that you think you look at that they could. Um, win them the All-Ireland. So there's plenty to work on. It's probably a bit like the Mayo game before, before us. There was times they were good, but, you know, that's, I suppose, uh, for them, David Clifford just scoring a point from, from a free, which is very unusual, and to score 4-22 and him to only score a point from free. So there's plenty to take good from Kerry, but there'll be plenty to improve on for them to move on to the winners of Monaghan and Tyrone. But is, is a lot of that due to the fact that it, it's very hard to assess a game like that, is it not? Yeah, only for the first quarter, as Cora said there, before the, the goal went in. Um, it was a, that was a very hard watch in the second half. It, 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 it's really... It's not good for Kerry. It's definitely not good for Cork. Uh, that, that hammering, like, are, are, are Cork better than that? Like, the, the, the way they collapsed, how easy the fight went out at them, the heads went down, they put a fight up for 20 minutes. And so you're saying they lost the fight, they stopped fighting? It's not that they stopped fighting, but I don't know how you can explain a team can come out for 20 minutes and play one way and be competitive in some sort of fashion. And I'm trying to think during the second half because you couldn't watch the match. It was, it was terrible. So you're thinking in that first 20 minutes... Sorry, Kerry, they did actually watch the match, though, that they're analysing. <laughs> we did. We, the, the, the first 20 minutes, even when Cork were doing well, Kerry were missing goal chances. David Clifford had a goal chance. So they could have actually wiped them earlier. But it was a non-event, and it's absolutely nothing. Like we said at the start of the year... Kerry would beat Clare, they would beat Cork, they now go on and face the, the winners of Tyrone and, and Monaghan. Uh, but in terms of Kerry learning anything here, absolutely nothing, no. It, it, it comes back to this conversation that unfortunately we've had too many times about the gap between the very top few. It's not just between Division mm. 1, the very top few, because Cork could just as yeah. easily have, have managed to make we've, it up to we've, Division we've 1 been this year. we that conversation that the top teams are kind of pulling away. Uh, we're certainly set up for very good all Ireland semi-finals no doubt about it but the bottom line is Cork are an average Division 2 side and if you're going to play man-to-man -man football and try and take on Kerry man-to-man -man, that's what they do to you and we've seen them they've done it to Galway they've done Tyrone in the league you know you have to and, and again people would criticise me if they came out for damage limitation you know what I mean like Tipperary did the last day but it's very very difficult there was just such a gulf in class between the two teams Cork are just way behind Kerry um, you know Kerry even Clifford not performing you know, they still they still put up that score. So once Kerry woke up, there was just a golfing class. Um, we didn't learn a whole lot about Kerry, but did we expect to learn a whole lot them, about them before the game? You know, the expectation was that Kerry were going to kick on and win this game of comfort, and that's exactly what they done. We will celebrate or talk about Kerry's win in a moment. But just one last one on Cork. 
Cork are a huge county with huge numbers playing and yes sometimes hurling dominates a lot of it but not entirely and they have put together a plan that they are working on where are the issues coming from that there is that massive gap were they less conditioned than Kerry today are they that much poorer in quality where is this coming from yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't think it's it's less conditions. I think it comes down to probably years of underage structure and development of players coming through, and and, and you know how how they have um, you know done over the the past few years. Obviously, we've seen that they're under twenties and um, have bet Kerry um, last weekend. But it, it's a conveyor belt. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's it's like any county. Um, you know, it, it takes years of um, development down there. And yeah, it's it's probably been a lot different to Kerry's over the time and. You know, success often breeds success. So, and we can see with Dublin um, and their underage structures and, and and teams like that. You know, the need at underage for teams to progress and do well. And I, I do think it's probably their development. And yeah, there's a huge gulf in standard, and that's not just in Cork. That's in many a county and um, throughout Ireland. Okay, let's talk about Kerry then. We know. Um that Paddy Clifford has mostly come in this year for the first time. You have a bee in your bonnet in relation to him and how he's been used in recent years. That's not a bee in my bonnet. I, I, I just think he should be in there the last three years. I think Paddy Clifford was uh, playing in Kerry County Championships with East Kerry, who were the dominant team in Kerry for the last few years, and he was doing exactly for them three years ago what he's now doing for Kerry. Um, he was by far and away um, the best player on the pitch today every single part of it even when the first 20 minutes when Kerry were struggling he was still the one beacon that was still firing I think he's a great bit of stuff he's that little bit of steel in him he's got that little bit of class in him he can pick out a kick pass from often or from out, way out he creates more than anything but you can catch him anywhere this is him back in his own defence he just has a low centre of gravity takes it out of, out of um, trouble anytime he wants Joanne and I suppose I, I, I do think that he has been overlooked by that management uh, for, for the last three years I think this year whatever way they brought him in and he has kicked on and every single game he's nearly been man of the match he only got a minute last year against Cork a minute down I think in Cork he, ha he has been man of the match in their three games yeah. I, would, I would have had him a man of the match last three he, games well, we, know that we know that Desi had for his man of the match Sean O'Shea but the official man of the match for you guys is ah Paddy oh, Clifford, Paddy Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> ok they say hands down Paddy Clifford so he is the man of the match here he is with Damien Paddy congratulations how did you turn that game around from the first quarter do you think um, just, kept, just kept battling away kept tipping away like the way the way Cork came out, we knew they were going to come out like that. But like Peter was adamant that maybe they wouldn't live with us fitness-wise, and maybe that was it. Maybe we just pushed on. Um, maybe we just kept pushing on and kept chipping away at the scores. Just for your own sake, uh, your own self, you tracked back out the field to get on the ball, Paddy. Tried to get into that pocket as well. Is it just about kind of feeling the game as you go along as well and seeing what kind of pattern it takes? Exactly. Yeah. It's just that's it. It's just feeling. Where's, our, where's the space, where the other forwards are. We're just trying to play as a unit and we're working hard in training and it's obviously working. Yeah, you heard unit. What a team performance when you got going. The likes of Tommy Walsh coming on doing the job as well, but there is great unity and you can really see that from the, the hunt for breaking ball and primary possession. Would you go along with that, buddy? Definitely, yeah. Um, like, the, exactly, the unity, like the, the standard of training, everything is just seems to be clicking so far obviously we have to keep it going we've we're nowhere near there yet but yeah it's, there's a great buzz in training and exact and the, the unity as you said just the last question for you i know there's a road to go for you guys yet so you won't be getting too carried away but i saw you playing for the kerry juniors a few years ago and to be here on a day like this is very very special how much does it mean and how much hard work did you have to put in to get to this level a lot of hard work uh, a lot of hard work um a lot of days in the gym a lot of days out kicking but the Kerry Juniors is a, is a great stepping stone for players. There's a lot of players, a lot of Kerry players playing today that came up from Kerry, the Kerry Juniors. Did you ever doubt your day would come? Um, maybe, maybe. But, yeah, I did, maybe, yeah. Right, well, anyway, you've got a second Man of the Match award in quick succession. You're the year Man of the Match, Paddy. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thanks. 
Oh, his day has come, and we have a feeling he has many, many more big days in a Kerry jersey ahead of him as well. So a huge gap in today's Munster football final, not so much in the Connacht one. We have a suspicion that next week's Ulster, Ulster final is going to be a lot closer. Who knows about the Leinster when we have those live view, of course, here on the Sunday game. But that's all we have time for today. So thank you to Tomas, to Cora and to Kieran as well. And well done to the football champions of Connacht and Munster, although both Mayo and Kerry do have their eyes on a bigger prize. Goodbye.